Hey everybody, today I'm going to tell you an absolutely infuriating story written right here about a man we'll call Calvin, who through sheer stupidity and bad habits and terrible financial planning is basically restarting life with zero dollars at 33 years old, even though he had a fantastic head start in his 20s. If you like personal finance, world economics broken down simply, and financial storytelling like this one, then you're in the right place, and I hope you stick around for the next one. As always, my name is Derek, and I got my degree in finance, so you don't have to. Without further ado, let's get started. Calvin's story truly starts at 28 years old, but before we get there, we have to talk about the ridiculous amount of financial head start Calvin had that most don't, because it truly makes the story that much more shocking and ridiculous. First and foremost, Calvin took three years off before even going to university. During that time, he worked different jobs here and there, really just to pay the bills and to pay for his adventures and travels around the United States because Calvin loved to adventure. He had a very expensive off-roading habit, and he spent most of his earned money on his Jeep, off-roading upgrades, camping equipment, and gasoline to get around his home state of Colorado, as well as neighboring states for adventuring. And I'm sure you could guess, but his jobs here and there absolutely could not afford this type of lifestyle. No, he had help from his mother, Marla, a single mother who for the last 20 years had struggled, persevered, and built a career in the medical field, first as an LVN, then as a nurse, and then as a traveling nurse, and finally as a nurse practitioner. And this career, while it definitely did not make her wealthy beyond belief, it absolutely made her well off. And by default, it made her two sons, Calvin and Calvin's younger brother, Eddie, also well off. They had a great childhood, and as they got old, older, Marla, through her career, was even able to buy a second vacation home up in the mountains, which by the time the story truly begins, when Calvin was 28 years old, was at that point fully paid off. Anyways, Calvin, for lack of a better term, dicked around until he was 22, at which time, with much pestering from his mom, finally enrolled in his local university. And surprisingly, he actually finished and graduated with his degree in just a little over four years. Unfortunately, though, after graduating with a bachelor's in communications at 26, he did nothing really with it. He didn't apply for jobs. He didn't start to build a career. He didn't do anything with it except tell himself and his mother that that degree was his backup. If he ever, ever needed to use it, he had it, and he could easily start applying for jobs, which were well-paying, if that time came. But right now, he was going to continue working at the local hardware store, which he had started doing so when he was in college, and he was going to continue enjoying his passion, which was adventuring and off-roading in his Jeep which was now a few years older, with many more miles under its belt, which also meant it was costing him more money in maintenance on a monthly basis. But I digress. The point is, this is what he did for two more years, all while in the meantime, his younger brother, Eddie, graduated college with a marketing degree, found a job in Austin, Texas, and relocated there. And as you can see, the two brothers had much, much different life paths setting up. And Calvin continued to do this exact same thing until he turned 28, when something unfortunate and unimaginable struck. <sighs> Unfortunately, a few months after Calvin turned 28, tragedy struck. His mother, who had supported him and put a roof over his head, unexpectedly passed away. And this was very, very difficult for both Calvin and Eddie. But Eddie had already moved out of state and was already getting on with his life. So it was much harder on Calvin. And although they definitely butted heads, Calvin and his mother, he truly loved her. And her unexpected passing definitely hit him hard. Luckily, though, for the brothers, the two houses, 
the original house that they grew up in and the house in the, in the mountains were both fully paid off. And they were both in a trust. And while that didn't take away the sadness, it did help avoid probate court that usually takes place after someone's unfortunate passing. Which is a good place to pause and say that as someone with a degree in finance, my expertise is in finance, not law. But there is some overlap when it comes to best practices. This is a good point in the story to say that if you have a house, or if your parents or your grandparents have a house, it's probably a good idea to talk to a lawyer or a paralegal, or at least start researching as to how to best go about estate planning. Trusts, LLCs, joint tenancies, and many other methods all can have different tax implications and sometimes benefits over, for example, a will. And a will is unfortunately how most people go about estate planning, probably because death is not really a topic most like to talk about. Anyways, I felt the need to add my perspective, but back to Calvin now. As we get back to the story, the point is that these houses were in a trust. And as the months went by and the grief subsided, Calvin and Andy started to figure out what best to do with these two homes. Since they were of similar value, the decision was simple. Calvin would keep the home in the mountains because he was an adventure junkie. And Eddie would keep their childhood home, which he planned to convert into an Airbnb so he could still keep the family home in the family while at the same time at least making a little bit of income from it. Again, you can start to see the stark difference in thinking and whose head, at least at the time, was on straight. Now, while this seems like a silver lining end to a sad situation, it's not. At least not for Calvin. This is just the beginning of his long list of financial mistakes that led him to today. Having to start all over again at 33 years old. From 28 until just recently, Calvin lived in that mountain home and he continued life like the money was never going to end. He used his degree, which he never actually used, as comfort. That if and when he needed a career, he could fall back on that. Well, for the last five years, Calvin continued to adventure all over Colorado and then all over the United States. Honestly, as time progressed, he started to feel rich, knowing that he held ownership to a home which was probably worth a little over half a million dollars. Because of this way of thinking, in the time span of those five years, he spent money he didn't have. He bought a brand new Jeep, and then he proceeded to dump tens of thousands of dollars into that Jeep in off-road upgrades. He also bought a second car. He justified it as a way of saving money in gas because he bought an electric car. Yay for him. Except he didn't just buy any electric car. He bought a Tesla Model 3 Performance, the most expensive and least efficient version of that car. There was also a lake nearby, and that lake allowed boats and jet skis, so he bought himself two very expensive jet skis, justifying it as, well, he didn't need to buy a truck because he could tow them with his Jeep. Now, you may be wondering how. How did he even buy any of these things? Well, he moved to that mountain house, and luckily for him, the hardware store that he was working at had a branch in the small mountain town where his home was located. And even more luckily for him, they needed an assistant manager. So that's exactly what he did. Now, unfortunately for him, though, this job did not make enough money to support that lifestyle. And even more unfortunately for him, this job, though, was enough money to allow him to qualify for a home equity loan. And I'm sure at this point, you're starting to see the direction this sad and unfortunately infuriating story is headed. Over the next few years, Calvin funded this lifestyle, his cars, his adventures with that home equity loan. A loan that if used for what it was meant to be used for, like home upgrades, repairs, and maintenance over the 30-year length of that loan, 
it may have actually worked out pretty well for him. But instead, since it was squandered on depreciating assets like new cars and on luxuries like off-roading upgrades, camping equipment, gasoline expenses, and now jet skis and jet ski maintenance, all it became to Calvin was a massive liability that did not generate a return in the slightest. And while this story already at this point is bad enough, it gets worse because that money eventually ran out. At which point, Calvin frantically searched for another way to fund his adventures, since now his paycheck barely covered his utilities, his property tax, and his loan repayments. And then Calvin made a cardinal personal finance sin. He started to fund his unnecessary lifestyle with credit cards. Over the final two years that leads us to today, Calvin racked up more than $90,000 worth of credit card debt. Calvin had amassed these huge credit lines during his 20s by always requesting credit increases when possible, and believe it or not, by always paying his credit cards on time. But that was at a time where he had the support of his mom. And while his habits then were still terrible, it was also at a time where he didn't have access to a half million dollar asset to squander. The insanely high interest rates on these credit cards ate away at any prospect of Calvin being able to repay them back. Just the interest alone on these credit cards were more than $15 thousand dollars per year plus the loan repayment of the home line of credit plus the property taxes plus the loan on his tesla which he had financed about half of and that that brings us to today well just to a few months ago remember how calvin would say that his fallback if he ever needed it was his communications degree well he knew that he was in deep shit, and he knew that it was time to use that degree to land a higher paying job. Unfortunately for him, we are in the middle of a huge fight against what remains of inflation, which means interest rates have been high for the last few years. These interest rates have done their job, constricting the economy, making it harder for companies to make money themselves, and making it harder for those companies to be willing to hire new employees. Unemployment has ticked up in recent months to 4% and will most likely continue to tick up higher in the coming months as the full brunt of the last two years of interest rate increases lands on the economy. Which means it will be harder and harder for Calvin to find a job to use that degree in in the first place especially when he has to explain to prospective companies why he hasn't really used it at all in over five years. And that now leads us to today. Calvin understands, finally, that he messed up. And that understanding, which is infuriating to me and probably infuriating to you as well, unfortunately was very slow to come to Calvin. Too slow to stop him from basically destroying his inheritance with debt. Calvin said that a month ago, he closed on the sale of his mountain home. A sale that he didn't want to go through with. And after the home line of credit, the car loan repayment, the repayment of his credit card debt, the interest associated with that credit card, and the fees for the sale of his home, he was left with $22,347. I am at a loss for words.